Try reading part of this paragraph. Were you able to read? I'm sure you were. This is to show you how powerful our brain is. As long as the letters of any word are in the right place, our mind will read it. The human brain does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. This video will explain you how our brain processes reading. What is reading? It is transforming graphic symbols in meanings. It is also a problem-solving way that readers use in a written text. When it comes to education, reading provides the foundation for children's academic success, since the more they read, the more areas of knowledge they have access to. Learning to read does not only change how the brain is organized, but also its anatomy. In fact, teaching students how to read is changing the student's brain. Now let's move to the reading outcome. Previous studies have revealed that if children have certain skills as they become readers, they will succeed in reading. The reading outcome depends on the alphabetic principle, phonological awareness, vocabulary which is having good understanding of words, background knowledge, and sentences structure. The acquisition of reading changes in children depending on some aspects, such as language they are learning to read, the orthography, which are about the different writing systems, also the intelligence quotient, social class, and sex. Now, how we learn to read a word? There are different concepts that are important to explain what happens in our brain when reading. When we read, we first understand the spelling patterns of the visual word forms, which refers to orthography. Then, we map those patterns onto the sound structure that we hear in words which is phonology. And finally, after looking at orthography and phonology, we have access to meaning, which refers to semantics. Also, when learning to read according to Eric's model, there are four phases of reading acquisition. When young children are becoming readers, they are, they are able to recognize the visual, advertising logos, the signs on the streets, for example, the stop sign. In other words, letters that are on their environment. This is the pre-alphabetic visual stage. The partial alphabetic phonological goods is when children begin to understand that letters have sounds that go with them. After, when they are more skilled, they understand the principles of decoding, which is the sound of words. This is about full alphabetic decoding. When they understand that some letter combinations exist again and again in our language, they are able to read those analogy, which is the consolidated alphabetic stage. Moreover, in learning to read, the phonological processing, processing abilities are critical. Within this, this term, there are three important parts. The phonemic awareness, phonological naming and working memory. These three parts will be discussed in depth later on in this video.
Now we have the phonological processing. In the phonological processing, we're going to find three levels. The phonological awareness, lexical processing, and semantic processing. The phonological awareness. Phonological awareness is the knowledge that spoken words can be broken into smaller segments of sound known as phonemes. The location is in the temporal lobe, which is basically responsible for phonological awareness and decoding or discriminating sounds. More specifically, it's located on the top of the temporal area and the inferior front of gyrus. As a second level, we have the lexical processing. In this level, the term phonics is found and can be referred as the knowledge that letters of the alphabet represent phonemes and that these sounds are blended together to form written words. Readers who are skilled in phonics can sound out words they haven't seen before without first having to memorize them. In other words, it's the phonological representation of words. The lexical processing has purposes and one of them is to determine the meanings of individual words. There are also basic methods, but one basic method is to look up in a database of meanings in our brain, which is called the lexicon. We should also be able to identify non-words, such as punctuation marks, example, period, comma, colon, semicolon, etc. However, there is a issue in this level, which is called word level ambiguity. It means that the words may have several meanings and the correct one cannot be chosen based solely on the world itself. This process occurs in the frontal lobe, which handles speech production, rhythm fluency, grammatical usage, and comprehension, making it possible to understand simple and complex grammar in our native language. As a third level, we have the semantic processing. This process is located in the left prefrontal regions. The semantic processing occurs after we hear a word and encode its meaning. It causes us to relate the word we just heard to other words with similar meanings. Once the word is perceived, it is placed in a context mentally that allows for a deeper processing. Therefore, semantic processing produces memory traces that last longer than those produced by shallow processing, since shallow processing produces fragile memory traces that decay it rapidly. The semantic processing is the deepest level of such process, and it requires the listener to think about the meaning um, of the cue. Now we have the neural basis of reading. And the left inferior temporal cortex is referred as the visual word, as you can see in here, because its role is to recognize words that we see in our environment and process their meaning very rapidly, such, such as the words the and that. The second one we have the left temporal parietal cortex. Uh, when we come across to a word we've never seen before, here we have the alphabetical code, we have to sound it out and apply correspondence rules. This area involves the phonological assembly and the access to the meaning. And the third one, left inferior frontal gyrus. Um, it's the dual role for both, alphabetical code and visual word form which produces the speech sounds. It's unbelievable how all this process may take only milliseconds to produce the reading. Once we have learned about the reading process, let's see how te to teach us how we can use this knowledge in our classroom. We agree that phonology instruction is critical in the reading process, so try these activities with your students. Matching letters to sounds, using pictures and the initials of their names. 
you can use also websites like Monster Mation to do so. Substituting different sounds for the first sound of songs. You can work with familiar songs and then you change the first sound of the words, like here, bro, bo, and so. You may try oral reading and choral reading. Segmentation activities are also important. Here you teach children to segment sentences into individual words. They can use clapping to separate the words. You can work with short tongue twisters at the beginning. As they advance, you can take them, segment words into syllables, and they, start, they may start with their names, like here, Peter, for example. Then they can segment short words into individual phonemes. Word recognition is also important in this reading process, so try letter sound correspondences, word and word parts, rapid identification of words, and here you have examples on how to create this material. Vocabulary teaching is also necessary, so preview key vocabulary before reading a reading passage. You can use pictures and cards. Help learners use English to English dictionaries effectively. Syntax teaching suggestions. Use close exercises, like this example. Identify parts of speech and their roles. Students, once students learn how to identify parts of speech, they can use exercises like this, where they label each word in a phrase or in a sentence according to the part of speech that it is. Then they can generate sentences using specific words in grammatical forms. Auditory working memory is also important, so you may try repetition of simple words. They can be adjectives of students and they can do word chains to reinforce their, their work, their memory. You can use visualizing. You can use chunking, especially for instruction. You may give an instruction, then make a pause, ask one student to recall and then continue with the instruction. Once the students have learned to read, you may try fluency activities like paired reading and also reading with audio. Finally, you may use Reader's Theatre to help students make reading a more fun experience. Remember that if you think reading is boring, probably you are doing it wrong. And the same can be happening to your students. So help them love reading.